I'm, my name is Jim Winship. I'm uh, uh, Secretary of the Events Industry Forum, and the forum was set up really to bring together all the trade bodies and uh, organisations that are involved in organising outdoor events. Uh, uh, before that, uh, it was formed about 10 years ago now, uh, before that, there were lots of disparate uh, trade bodies, um, um, Event Suppliers Association, which I run, being one of those, uh, NOAA being another one, I mean, the whole string of them. Um, and it was felt that actually until we actually got our heads together and actually were a force in our, as a whole for the industry, we would never be listened to by government. So what we initially just met and met around a table and talked about all the issues that were all effect, affecting all of us. Uh, and then uh, the one of the big issues that we were concerned with, all of us concerned with, was that the Purple Guide, which had been produced uh, by the industry with the HSE back in the early 90s, was never being updated and it was getting very long in the tooth and really didn't uh, stand up for scrutiny in the, in the current world we live in. So um, we started negotiating with the HSE to, to initially to get them to up, do the updating, but uh, increasingly they were unable to do that because they were restricted by their what they were allowed to do. And we wanted a guide that was actually going to be a maintained guide that would cover everything really to do with outdoor events because there was nothing out there at the time to do that. So. Um, after long negotiations, we agreed with the HSE that we would take over the publication of the guide um, at the loss for the HSE because it was actually the biggest selling doc, uh, document the stationery office, I think, has ever sold. <laughs> but we took it over, we uh, but retained the relationship with the HSE. So they endorse it or they support it. Um, and uh, we work very closely with them. So whenever we write a chapter or anything, it's always checked by the HSE to maintain their support for it. Uh, the, the, the HSE is the health and safety executive. That's the body, government body, that is responsible for health and safety in, in all aspects of the workplace and including events. So um, it's, a, it's an important body that uh, has always been involved in events to, to a very great extent because of the risks of round events. Anyway, our situation really was that we, we decided that we needed to a update the purple guide as it stood, um, which we did, uh, and then uh, to start expanding on that. So we, we've built the guide. It's now, it's gone from something like 10 chapters now to 34. Um, we include disability and everything in that. So it's, um, and it's still, it's a living document that gets updated on a regular basis. And the forum uh, is responsible for actually looking after that and managing that. And we have a limited liability company that manages the subscriptions for it. It's, um, we have a subscription base because that uh, enables us to do things as a forum. But it also, uh, the, all the money that comes in from sales of the Purple Guide uh, is ring fenced to go back into the benefit for the benefit of the outdoor event industry. It might be for lobbying on uh, government on issues that affect everyone. Uh, and obviously in COVID, <laughs> the last 18 months of hell we've all been through, uh, that's been a major part of our lives in terms of negotiating with government on every aspect of trying to get things back to normal again. I mean, long last, we're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel, I think. And um, hopefully by next year, we'll see events coming back uh, really strongly. But uh, at least we, we've had, uh, we're in a position now where we're actually talking very closely with government and, and being listened to by, by government, which I think before the event, event industry forum was really came about, uh, wasn't really happening. And, and outdoor events were always seen as a sort of poor relation buried at the bottom of a pile somewhere in DCMS. Um, so I think we're now, we're now being listened to and providing quite a lot of information and, and detail to DCMS that allows them to, to make policies that actually help our industry a bit. Every event has its own challenges. So I mean, we're never going to have a prescriptive document like the, well, the Purple Guy can never be a prescriptive document for every event because every everything uh, has some sort of side quirk to it that's going to be different from the, another event. But it provides the fundamental um, thinking and 
process that you need to go through to run a safe event, whether that's an agricultural show or a community, a local small community concert somewhere. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty adaptable to most situations. And uh, it, it's very much a, a, the way forward, I think, in terms of trying to get a more consistent approach to events. And actually, we're working at the moment to try and bring the Purple Guide um, within uh, what's called the Primary Authority Scheme, which is a the Primary Authority Scheme is a uh, does, was designed by the government to try and get consistency across local authorities. So uh, by get, working with one local authority, um, uh, you can actually create a standard that other local authorities should follow, and certainly in terms of interpretation of legislation, which is often an issue for people. Um, and so we're, we're actually trying to do that at the moment. So it's working. The difficulty we've got is to try and fit something like the Purple Guide into uh, the regulations that allow the per primary authority scheme to work. But we're, we're working towards that anyway at the moment with, with the government. <laughs> but I think, I think the, the aim is to try and get everyone using one standard guide that everyone understands and follows and that ranges from local authorities and an awful lot of local authorities already adopt the purple guide um and I, I think it would make life an awful lot easier if every local authority followed the same standards which is what we're trying to achieve at the moment i think consistency has been a big issue across the event industry for some years and, and we're trying to tackle it and we've got the support of the local government association and licensing officers and people in the the approach to that as well as the government or the government itself so i think I, we've got a good chance of actually trying to achieve that at the moment i think uh, fingers crossed in a year or so we should be there and have a much more structured outdoor event industry than perhaps we've had in the past with with local authorities working in partnership with event organizers to make things happen for everyone and we all want that at the end of the day you know I, everyone would welcome i think that consistency if we can get it i mean particularly where you've got events that are being traveling around the country, for example, uh, and you can go from one authority to another and be faced with completely different interpretation of rules. That creates problems for everyone. And if we could get away from that, that would make life an awful lot easier for everyone, really. But it is building relationships. And I think we have to recognize that, you know, whether you're an event organizer or local authority, we all need to work together to try and make uh, the outdoor event industry work in the best possible way. None of us want to have the risks and dangers that you can get if people don't do things properly. Uh, and we all want to have an uh, event industry that people come to and enjoy and feel safe in. So, uh, and we, get, we generate an awful lot of money for the government in terms of taxes. It runs into the billions. So uh, it's in government's interest to help us get our industry back on its feet again after COVID and to, to build a strong and uh, long living industry for the future and provide many many jobs over half a million people work in the outdoor event industry alone i mean there are, there are lots of jobs and things going in the outdoor event industry which people who are disabled or or impair, have impaired uh, is, impairment issues can easily slot into and help with and we're desperately short of people at the moment so yes come along and join us i mean we welcome you with open arms i think and it, but there are issues facing us at the moment. I mean, we're we're desperately short of staff. Uh, there are, there are supply chain problems in terms of uh, shortages of equipment and things. Particularly over the autumn, it's been bad because we've had a whole load of events happening which wouldn't normally all happen in the autumn. Uh, so it's put pressures on. And some of the businesses in the industry, the supply businesses, have themselves uh, suffered over the COVID period and aren't able to respond in the way they used to. So it's a combination of factors. But I think we're very confident that the industry will come back strongly next year. Um, and uh, I think we'll see, I mean, festivals have had a particularly bad time this year. Um, and uh, because it was too late by the time uh, government re relaxed the rules for them to really get going again properly. But I think we should see them all retur returning next year, fingers crossed. <laughs> and. Um, I think the the industry is very resilient and will will fight its way back. It just needs the time to get there and and make it. And it's a really important industry for everyone, really. Thank you so much, Jim. We really appreciate your time. That's all right. Anytime.